How's it going, everyone? So recently on my Instagram, I got a message from somebody. Literally, his name's somebody. That's pretty funny. But he was asking how to export out of plasticity into Blender and then over to Substance Painter for texturing. So pretty much, I just want to go over that whole process and workflow in this video, taking a model from plasticity, cleaning it up in Blender, and then in Substance Painter, doing a little bit of texture work and then back into Blender. So let's go ahead and see how that's done. If you guys want to see more of my work, go ahead and check out my Instagram. I do a lot of little one minute tutorials and then post a lot of my personal projects over there. And it's a great way to reach out and DM me if you have any questions or want to see future tutorials or videos stuff like that so yeah i hope to see you guys over there but with that said let's hop into the video so here in plasticity i have this model that i worked up nothing too crazy just something that i was messing around with using all the tools here this isn't going to be a modeling tutorial but more of a workflow tutorial getting this to blender and then substance painter with my model here what we're going to do is save the file so i'm working on a mac so it's command shift s and then I'll flash up what it is for a Windows, but you wanna save your project and then you'll notice if you come down here, you can save it as a plasticity file or what I do is an OBJ. So with this done, I now have an OBJ that I can use in Blender. I'm gonna call this tutorial and then go ahead and click save and you'll notice it brings up this whole entirely new menu kind of showing you the topography of everything so i kind of want to take a minute to like go over this so if you haven't used plasticity you kind of see what this will look like in a different program here you have multiple options for your topology tries quads and n-gons i like to stick to tries because it does a really good job of giving you a bunch of triangle geometry quads is a little bit finicky because you'll see we zoom in there are some spots with triangles so it's not a perfect quad topology so i kind of just lean against that i don't really do it and then if i really want clean topology i'll do n-gons but for the most part i just stick with tries and then this is your resolution right here so your density so leaving it at 0.5 gets you a pretty decent model you can see all the stuff here if we boost this up to one you'll see the subdivision goes up tremendously i stick with 0.5 works for me it's a nice middle ground and then you have all these other settings that i won't get into mostly i just mess around with these two up here to get what i'm looking for in blender so once i have that i'm just going to hit okay but now we're going to head over to blender and clean this up so now that i'm in blender i'm going to import my model that we just saved so heading up to file i'm going to head over to import and then wavefront obj and then go ahead and find where you saved your file at i just brought my model in from plasticity and as you can see it's rotated rotated 90 that's because plasticity uses a y up while blender uses a z up so you're just gonna have to rotate these when you bring them in so rx negative 90 will fix that for you now you can see we have our model here and if we hit tab to go into edit mode we can see the topology and it's not the prettiest topology i'll be 100 percent honest when you're doing the try stuff it can be a lot of work to clean up so for instance let's just say i want to start unwrapping this for substance painter I have to individually click all of these, which can take some time. And then what I like to personally do when I bring anything in from plasticity is I'll hit all, I'll go into edit mode, hit all, and then I'll like, I like to merge by distance just to make sure it cleans up any super close vertices or anything like that. And then it brings up this panel that you can mess around with further. So if you know you want to kind of clean it up some more, you can add that and you can see remove 30 vertices. So I always like to do that just in case. But in terms of the tri topology, it gives you like the most like a game ready asset just because they use tri topology. But in terms of, you know, like going in here and UV unwrapping stuff, it's kind of a pain. You can go up, hit select select sharp edges that'll help you a lot and then mark your seams that way but if you want to come in here and say split this in half you'll have to go in and individually click every single one of these which can be a pain and then you'll see it doesn't even line up here so you'd have to go to the side so what i like to use if i know i'm going to be like doing this if i'm not going to be you know uploading this to like a marketplace or anything i like to use the ngon version so here i brought in the ngon version and you can see this actually has loops so if i go ahead and select some of these you can see that it actually goes around when i hit option select and i don't have to individually select everyone so this speeds up the unwrapping process a lot because i don't have to go in and manually select a bunch of stuff and it also brings in sharp edges as you can see here so another nice tip that i like to use is if you click on one of your seams here with a blue outline and you select by similar sharpness it'll select all of them and then you can just go ahead and mark your seams that way i'm going to go ahead and unwrap this and once i have everything unwrapped we're going to go ahead and discuss exporting this over to substance painter so let me go ahead and do this real quick all right so i just uv unwrapped everything it's not the prettiest of uv unwraps so i was just being kind of quick to speed up this tutorial here but you can see there's no overlapping uvs or anything if we take a look at the uv panel over here everything has its nice own little islands and stuff and everything's nice and separated there is a little bit you know you can spend more time cleaning this up but like i said this is for a tutorial so i'm not trying to make everything perfect and then i get a lot of questions too on this like how i get the checkerboard pattern and then honestly all you have to do is head over to your shader editor 
add in an image texture and then when you hit new you have an option for generated type usually it's set to blank but if you go over here and you set uv grid or color grid that's what will give you this effect here to check your UVs and stuff, which I use all the time. So just a little quick tip for you. Now that we have this ready, another thing that I like to do whenever I'm making these meshes is I like to head over to my workbench preview and then I'll just select things. And then I personally like to vertex paint stuff. So when I bring it into Substance Painter, I have a lot of selection tools to pick from. So now that we have this, we can go and export this now. So we export from plasticity and then we clean it up here in Blender, add in our UVs, uh, mark seams, all that kind of stuff, adjust things, remove vertices add vertices if you have to and then export again and then shoot it over to substance painter so let's do that so with my model selected i'm just going to go ahead and head up to file again export and then wave font obj or fbx usually i like to do fbx so i'll do an fbx for this one and then go ahead and save it to that same folder that you've been working in I'll call this one tutorial like the last one. And then I like to select limit to selected objects, especially if I have a larger scene. So it only exports the thing that I have highlighted. So then go ahead and export. Now, once we're in Substance Painter, we can go ahead and create a new project by coming up here and doing file new or the hotkey is command N. So I'll just do that. And then we'll go ahead and select that file that we just created. Just brought that in here. And then all you have to do is hit okay. And like I said, this isn't gonna be in-depth tutorials on any of these programs. This is kind of just like a workflow if you're trying to get your your plasticity models into blender and then texture them inside of substance painter but once we have this done we have this in here i'm going to go ahead and close this uv panel just so it's a little bit cleaner we have our model in here and then if we go over to texture set settings we can go ahead and bake all of our mesh maps which will allow us to have a lot of fine control over texturing this model once in the baking section you have all these settings all you have to do is worry about these so just go ahead and follow along so for common settings i switch this down to 4k which will work fine in most occasions if you're getting really close to objects you can do 8k 4k works perfect and then we're going to turn off normal and then thickness because we don't really need those on this project and then id we set over to vertex color if we added in vertex colors because this will allow us to select those and make selections easier on our mesh and then lastly ambient occlusion the max occluder distance this will kind of just shrink width of it's like a color ramp for your occlusion in blender if you're familiar so i like to just bring this down halfway so it's not as intense and then we just go ahead and bake our textures here all right we got everything baked and then i just go around and triple check that my models don't have any weird stuff going on with them so whether that's texturing you can usually tell if something's weird it'll be like overlapping and then it's like dark areas that look like shadow and that just means your uv islands are kind of overlapping so you got to fix that but it looks good to me now that everything checks out on our model and everything looks good let's go ahead and add on a cool material here i like to use let's go for a metallic feel on this so let's look up a metal metal we have all this stuff here i think a painted metal would be pretty cool let's try one of these yeah perfect look at that so and as you can see since this is substance painter and we baked everything and then we uv unwrapped everything correctly it's really easy to texture this from this point on so if you know substance painter you should go ahead and, and texture to export out of here back into blender you're going to do command shift e on a mac and then you're going to go over here select your settings so i want this to be a 4k resolution i'm going to make it a png and then you can just export this as any PBR metallic roughness though, it doesn't really matter. And then for your output directory, go ahead and just save it to that same folder that we've been working with. But let's go ahead and hit export. Back in Blender, we hit Control Shift T to open up our Node Wrangler for adding materials. We'll do that. Head over to the folder that we saved this to. And then you can see in this folder, I have all of the maps that we exported. So I'll just select all these, except the height, don't really need the height. If we go over to our material preview, you will see that we just brought this in. So we took this model from plasticity, brought it into Blender where we cleaned it up, marked our seams, UV unwrapped it, added in vertex colors for Substance Painter. And then in Substance Painter, if you do everything properly in Blender and make sure that it's a nice UV unwrapped model, it's super easy to texture. And then when you bring everything back in, it should look pretty good. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see more tutorials like this, whether that's for Substance Painter, Blender, or Plasticity, go ahead and let me know. I'd love to kind of answer those and share the knowledge with you guys. If you haven't already, check out my Instagram. I post a lot of cool stuff over there, especially little tutorials. I have one minute tutorials that I post all the time. So if that interests you, go ahead and check that out. But with that said, it's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed.